Good afternoon. This webinar offers closed captioning. To enable the closed captioning, click on the blue widget or the closed caption in, a, in the box located to the bottom left of the screen. Welcome to the City of Chicago Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. We have adapted our regular business education workshops at City Hall into these webinars until further notice. Please note any website or emails that I mentioned will be posted in the chat box. All BACP offices are open to limited members of the public. Masks are required in all BACP facilities. For those seeking business license assistance, we strongly encourage the processing of licenses and permits online. Business licenses can be applied for or renewed online at chicagobusinessdirect.org or you can call 312-74-GO-BIZ. If you are a part of the BACP Entrepreneur Certificate Program, you can get credit for joining this webinar by sending an email to BACPoutreach at cityofchicago.org. If you want to learn more about this program, please visit chicago.gov forward slash business education. Also, this webinar is being recorded and will be available at youtube.com forward slash Chicago BACP. I will post the mentioned information in the chat box. We encourage attendees to ask questions. Please use the chat box to send your questions to all panelists. There will be a Q&A session at the end of this presentation. Today's webinar is entitled Access to Capital Programs with the SBA. And our presenters are Mr. Mark Ferguson, Deputy District Director, and Dara Perryman, Outreach and Marketing Specialist for the SBA Illinois District Office. At this time, I will now turn this presentation over to Ms. Dara for us to begin. Good afternoon. Thank you for having us on and thanks, thanks to everyone who's who have tuned in. So we're going to be talking about access to capital programs and a little bit more about the SBA. My name is Dara Perryman. I'm an outreach and marketing specialist, and we also have our deputy district director, Mark Ferguson, on the line, and he'll jump in for Q&A or periodically if he has anything to add. So a little agenda overview, we're going to talk about the SBA, so we're all on the same page and we all know a little bit more about the SBA and what we do, a little bit about SBA lending and how our programs work and then our access to capital programs. And then the bulk of today, we'll be discussing the COVID-19 Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. And then we'll finally end it up with some other resources and resource partners that you can get connected to. So about the SBA, if you're not aware, the SBA is a federal agency. We provide capital, counseling, and contracting opportunities to small businesses. So, Today, we're not gonna to touch on too much on the contracting, but if you are interested in that, we do monthly webinars on how to get started in contracting. A little bit about it, um, essentially the SBA helps small businesses with some of our programs and landing federal contracts. So if you're a small business out there and you produce or you sell something that the federal government um, is, is looking to, to buy, you could potentially land some federal contracts and it can be a really great opportunity for small businesses it can help with the development we also have a certification program so if you want to get certified as a women-owned small business or better known minority owned these certifications further help you land federal government contracts so again if you're interested in that there's a lot to it but we do do monthly webinars on that so just feel free to put it in the chat and we're happy to link to our next one i think which would be next month and then another aspect of the SBA is our capital access to capital program. So we'll talk about that today. And then finally, counseling. So we partner with resource partners, which are vested in communities throughout the country to really provide that one on one assistance. So whether you're looking to start a business and you really have no idea where to start, or if you're looking to sustain your current business and, and maybe need some assistance preparing to talk to a lender, or maybe you want to work with someone that, that can help you navigate these SBA programs. Our resource partners are a free resource that I really encourage all small business owners to, to at least research and know about because it is a, a great free resource for you. So how can an SBA loan or SBA backed loan help you? So of our staple lending programs, we have two, which is our 7A lending program and our 504 lending program. So those are actually SBA backed loans. So what that means is that you'll find a, a, a 
private lender and the lender is a, that is a partner with us and participates in our program, but we provide a guarantee. That guarantee is gonna further incentivize the lender to lend to small businesses, which is what we want and really the goal. So it's a wonderful opportunity and we're gonna get into that in just a moment about the two staple programs and how um, they could potentially help your business. So whether you're looking for capital to launch your business or grow if you're a startup, you could look into these programs. Or if you need access to, let's say, revolving working capital or revolving lines of credit, um, or maybe you wanna purchase um, some real estate or some inventory or machinery, a lot of flexibility as far, as far as what you could need the money for and how these loans can help your business. Now, the number one um, the other huge benefit of the program, it, of our lending programs, is that it's increasing your chances of getting approved because we have that, again, that SBA backed loans. We're providing a guarantee to the lender. They're participating in our programs to help small businesses get access to, to the loans that could help their small businesses. Uh, basic requirements. So, um, just these are just kind of the baseline for most SBA lending programs. We're going to look at what your business does to receive an income. So, you know, you can't be involved in any illegal activities, a big one, or the character of its ownership. So, if the owner has defaulted on federal debt in the past, well, that's definitely going to be uh, an indicator, or let's say is delinquent on child support or any of the, that nature, the character of the ownership is something that would be assessed. The business should operate in the U.S. and they also must meet the SBA size standards. So typically a small business would be a, bit, a business with 500 or less employees, but that does vary by industry. So you'll want to know your industry and what the definition of a small business in that industry. So you can do that by going to sba.gov forward slash size standards. If you're going to participate in any SBA programs, you must be a small business. So you definitely want to make sure you're, you know that. And then finally, for loan programs, we're going to look at your repayment ability. So you do have to demonstrate that if we were to, uh, per, you know, lend the, any money to your business, or if you were looking to participate in these loan programs, you, you must show that ability to repay. Now, for staple loan programs, it's for-profit businesses, but for COVID-19 economic injury disaster loan, private nonprofits do qualify. So uh, just, just make sure to you're paying attention to which loan program we're discussing if you are, for example, a nonprofit hoping to take advantage of some of these programs. So before we get into the COVID-19 program, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, we're just going to quickly talk about SBA staple loan programs. So these loan programs are our most popular. We have two really known ones. And again, for these programs, you're going to go through a lender and I'll show you a tool and how you can find a lender that's participating. But essentially, our first one is a 7A loan program. So it's our most popular one. This one can be used for just about anything, pretty much your working capital needs is up to 5 million. And as a borrower, you're going to put 10% down most of the time. Um, and I'll go to our next slide as far as use of proceeds. You can use this for working capital, whether that's your long-term or short-term working capital. If you need to purchase new equipment or machinery or even real estate, or if you need to construct a new building or even renovate the, a building, um, or if you're establishing a new business, or maybe you need a, some assistance in acquiring um, or expanding an existing one. Now, another use of proceeds could be um, refinancing existing business debt. So that's something that you could potentially use this, this program for. And before we go on, I just want to just emphasize again, and I'll we'll, we'll take you to how to find lenders in just a moment, but for both of our staple programs, you will go through a lender um, that is participating in order to get started. Now, the second staple loan program we have, which is available, um, is our 504 loan program. This one's a little bit different than 7A. This one, there's going to be essentially three parties involved. So you as a borrower would typically put down 10%. Then we'll, we'll have a CDC, and the CDC stands for Certified Development, Development Companies. So th those are usually vested in communities and are really focused on economic development. So they may have further requirements if they were going to participate. Um, and then finally, a lender. So those three parties would come together to finance the loan. And, um, the, the standout for this one is potentially longer term limits and potentially lower monthly payments. Now, as far as what you can use for, you cannot use this for working capital 
or consolidating, repaying, or refinancing debt. So if you're looking to do that, then it's the 7A loan program. But if you're wanting to maybe purchase or construct an existing building or a new facility, or maybe you need to finance some long-term machinery or equipment, you need to make some improvements, th those types of items that is allowable use of proceeds. So the 504 program could be something for you. But if you're more looking for working capital, the day-to-day -day operations, the 7A program may be a better fit. So for both of our staple programs, 7A and 504, how do you get started? You want to go through Lender Match. It's a tool that we have. Um, essentially, what you're going to do is go to sba.gov forward slash Lender Match. You'll put in your needs as far as what you're looking for, what, what kind of um, financing you need, and then you're going to get matched with lenders, matched with lenders who are participating in the 7A or 504 program. And then at that point, you can start the application process. Now, as I mentioned, we have resource partners all over Illinois, all over the country, and you'll want to, we always recommend, it's always a good idea to connect with a resource partner. So we have a small business development center, for example, it can help prepare you for this conversation with the lender. You know, before you approach a lender, you want to be prepared. You want to make a good first impression. So definitely would recommend, although Lender Match is a great tool to go to as far as identifying lenders, you want to make sure before you start that initial contact that you're prepared. So you may want to connect with the resource partner before doing that. Okay. And if you have questions throughout, I'm sorry, I monitor the chat. Um, I haven't seen anyone. No, not yet. Okay. So yeah, please feel free to put any questions that you have in the chat and we'll monitor that throughout. Um, the next program that we'll we'll pivot to, so those are staple lending programs. Um, and if you want to learn more about them, they're all on our website as well. But now we'll talk about the COVID-19 Economic Injury Disaster Loan. So this is very different from our standard loan program. So this was established specifically for the pandemic, for businesses impacted by the pandemic. And essentially what this is, instead of having entrepreneurs and businesses and private nonprofits go through a, another lender to participate, the, this program is directly from the SBA to the borrower. So you actually apply directly on our website um, it's just covid19relief.sba.gov, so that's where you'll need to go. And then the SBA will then evaluate your application and, and communicate directly with the applicant. So there's no middle entity in this program. So for this program, you must have been in operation at before January 31st, 2020. If you have some questions about what in operation exactly means or what it exactly looks like, I can put that in the chat. We have a link to a frequently asked question document that does outline Essentially, you just had to have been at least the organizing state and, and have documentation showing that, even if you weren't, if your doors weren't quite open yet. But January 31st, 2020 is that cutoff date. Um, additionally, there's some really important flexibilities that were just added to this program. So we'll touch on that in a moment. But one thing I do want to stress is that this program will close on December 31st, 2021. So I would really recommend if you are interested in it, you will, you really want to get your application in as soon as possible. That is the last day the program is open. But if you apply on that day and you're not approved, you know, before that date, you you will not you will miss out on the program. So just try and get it in as soon as possible. Interest rates are 3.75 percent, and that's fixed over 30 years. No early prepayment or no prepayment penalty. And then if you're a private nonprofit, your interest rate is 2.75. So more about the program. Um, so another flexibility. So this program, again, has been around since the start of the pandemic. And as we're kind of ending out the program, we really just want to encourage folks to apply uh, if this is something you're interested in. Another flexibility that was added is that the your first loan payment is not due until two years after a loan origination. Two years after you get your, your funding is when your first payment is due. So it really does provide you with great flexibility. Um, and then the flexible use, this is a working capital loan. So um, we'll get into what that means, but essentially the the day to day of running your business, you can use it to pay business debt. Um, and we'll, we'll talk more on the specifics of that momentarily. And again, just emphasizing again, this loan is directly from the SBA to the borrower. You don't have to go to another lender or any or CDC or anybody. This is directly through the SBA. 
So policy changes, as I said, these this is, program has been revamped to provide a little bit more flexibility for small businesses. So there's been an increased cap. So originally, or you know, earlier this year, the cap was five hundred thousand dollars. Now it has been raised to two million dollars. There was an exclusivity period. Basically, what that meant was that they were only going to approve loans uh, under five hundred thousand until. October 8th. Now we are past that period. So we are now approving loans up to 2 million. Um, and then as far as allowable use of program or proceeds. So essentially, you can, as I was saying, working capital loan, but you can use it to pay your business debt. If you have commercial debt, let's say, and you want to prepay it, you can, you can do that with this loan. The only caveat with payments is that if you have, let's say another, if you have a 7A loan or any federal debt for your business, you cannot prepay that debt. You only can make the regular scheduled monthly payments. But if you have, again, that commercial, lent, uh, any commercial debt, you can prepay it with this loan. Again, 24 months deferment. So you, you don't have to worry about making a payment at least until 24 months from when that loan originally origination. Now there's been some flexibility as far as affiliation requirements. So we've tweaked that a little bit and made it a little bit more clear. And then another update was that was made was trying to expand who qualifies for this program. So remember, you must be a small business to qualify. And uh, one of the caveats was that, you know, your business typically is no more than 500 employees, but for businesses with certain nice codes. So these are the ones that are listed up on the screen. And I actually think right here. Yeah, right here is a little bit larger for you. These are the, the, the businesses that We've um, allowed a little bit more flexibility for and how you can qualify. So all the businesses with the NICS codes listed, um, they can qualify if they have no more than 500 employees per physical location. Whereas before it was just, you know, the flat out no more than 500 employees. The, this change has allowed businesses and these certain NICS codes to qualify if you have no more than 500 employees per location and you have 20 or fewer locations in total. And right here. All right. And then um, now getting back to, I know most people who've heard of COVID idle, you may already have applied, you may already have a COVID idle loan. So in that case, you can apply for an increase. So let's say um, you know you've you've had it for a while before this cap was announced or a new cap. So what you want to do is just log into your portal where you applied. Once you apply you'll you'll get your login information emailed to you and you'll set set up your account so if you already have an idle loan you want to just log in and there should be an option there to apply for an increase now if you don't see that <clears throat> excuse me if you don't see that option it could mean that you one you've already been offered the full amount that you were qualified for or two it could it could just be i've seen it sometime like a technical error in that case you'll just want to contact the sba and um and we'll put i can put that contact information there's a COVID idle increase inbox that you just want to send an email to letting them know that you would maybe want to be considered for a higher loan amount so application process or resources really you'll want to go to sba.gov forward slash idle and i'll actually go there right now all right so sba.gov forward slash EIDL. This is a place you want to be familiar with. It has a lot of resources to kind of walk you through um, the program and um, some documents to help you along the way. If you go to COVID IDLE, we'll start there. Um, and you can scroll down and it basically tells you pretty much everything we've talked about as far as your loan term, your interest rate, um, but if you do scroll down, you will see the FAQ regarding COVID idle. If you want to check that out. Oh, I have it open right here. So here we are. So here's the FAQ document. It's a very, very helpful resource and it may, um, it may answer a lot of questions that you have. Um, I'm seeing some questions in. I'll address those momentarily. Um, oh, and then. Where else did I want to take you? And then another place I wanted to take you is the portal walkthrough checklist. So this is if you are looking to apply and you need um, a, some visuals that are always helpful, you can go to this document. 
and there we are. So again, this is all on sba.gov forward slash EIDL. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a moment and see what questions we have before we move on. Right. Um, if you're a startup business, will this apply towards me? So for the COVID idle program, the requirement was that you had to have been in business or it had been in operation as of January 31st, 2020. Now for the, the 7A, for example, or the 504, you could be a, a startup business. Um, you, we want to see the managerial experience. We'll want to see that you've invested into the business, but um, you potentially could qualify for a standard SBA loan. Um, I would recommend maybe connecting with a resource partner to start that conversation. So maybe COVID IDA wouldn't be best for you um, if you hadn't been in operation as of that date, but you could potentially qualify for some of the other programs. Um, so this webinar is being recorded, so there won't be a copy of the slides, but the, there will be a recording of um, this webinar for you. Someone had asked for a copy of the slides. Um, So I had an idle and I wasn't eligible for a second because I wasn't functioning during 2020 um, and there wasn't tax documents. How can I become eligible again? So yeah, it would depend if you, um, if you were denied, you would have been sent a letter outlining why you were denied and if there is an opportunity to apply for reconsideration. So they would have outlined that given your specific denial. Um, so I would I would say reference that letter and see what most, if, if not all the time, we do offer a pathway as far as an, an opportunity to apply for reconsideration. So as far as becoming eligible, again, identify that um, letter to figure out why, why you weren't um, qualified and then what you need to do or what you need to provide to have a second review. And as Mark said in the chat, if you already had a disaster loan and you're looking for another one, the idle loan, the COVID-19 idle loan is only one loan per business. Now you can ask for an increase. That is an opportunity. Now you can do that in order to get an increase. You'll want to go to your portal and there should be an, an option there to request an increase. Now, if that's not showing up, then you want to send an email to COVID idle increase request at sba.gov and I'll go ahead and put that in the chat um, because it could be an error or you, you just maybe want to know more information as far as why you're not um, able to request it online. And before we go back to idle, um, we'll briefly just mention this. So in addition to the loan, there are advanced programs. So if you go back to sba.gov forward slash EIDL, you can go to our landing page, you'll see idle advanced programs. So the advance is essentially is a one-time payment from the SBA to the entrepreneur. It does not have to be paid back. It's similar to a grant, though technically it doesn't um, fall into the definition of a government grant. So that's why it's called the advance payment. But um, three of the requirements for this program. Well, first to even be considered, you must apply to the idle loan program. Now, you don't have to accept a loan. You, that's just how you kind of get the ball going. You first apply for the idle loan at covid19relief.sba.gov. From there, you must meet three big requirements. You must be in a low-income community. So here we have a map. And open that. Um, this map will, you'll input your business address and it must fall within a low-income community in order to qualify for this advanced program. Number two, you must be able to demonstrate more than 30% reduction in revenue during an eight-week period starting March 2nd, 2020 or later, just at, at least eight weeks from that period on. And then number three, you must have 300 or less employees. So if you meet that requirement, again, would encourage you to go ahead and submit the idle loan application. And from there, you could be invited to apply for the advance payment. 
All right, I'm seeing some other questions. So is credit score and history and any other information required for the loan? So yes, for pretty much all the programs, your, your credit score and history would be evaluated. Now for the COVID-19 economic injury disaster loan, we do allow if your credit score has been impacted by the pandemic, for example, then you do have that option again, if you are denied, you will get a letter and there's an opportunity for you to reapply. You can uh, submit a narrative pertaining to that. If anything's on your history that you wanna provide context to, um, and that may help your case as well if it's been, a, it's been some time from when you were denied and maybe you've taken steps to improve your credit, you can authorize, also authorize the SBA to repool your credit. Um, I've applied for IDLE, but I haven't heard about the decision yet. Oh, and it's been since March. Yeah, so that is, that's been a while. So I would say if, if you haven't heard anything, if you apply to IDLE and you don't hear anything in four, five weeks, then you definitely want to follow up. But even that, um, you should at least hear something, you know. So follow up, we have a customer service line and an email. I will put that in the chat as well. And just see what's going on. Maybe the SBA has tried to reach out to you and somehow that communication got lost. Now, I wouldn't suggest applying again. I mean, essentially what will happen is the that application may get flagged as a duplicate. Because again, the idle loan, you only can have one per business. So um, I would try and follow up with customer service, see what's going on, and you can potentially reactivate that first application um, and, and then get the ball rolling on that. Okay, so now we talked a lot about our resource partner network. So uh, just to summarize who they are and what they do, you can locate them at sba.gov forward slash local assistance. And again, they're all throughout Illinois. So we have our four partners. So basically they provide mentorship and advice. They also do free online workshops and webinars. So check out their uh, website and what they may be able to offer. So we also have our small business development center. So they provide more consulting and more of like low cost training. They may do more in depth training. So there may be a cost, but a biggest thing for them would be consulting and that guidance. And that is free. We have a women's business development center and they also do training and counseling and they do business advice as well. And then our veterans business outreach center. So they provide counseling or transition assistance and resource referral. So these networks are really important and really, um, especially if you're thinking about approaching a lender, I would say try and find an SBDC or SCORE chapter or, or the Veterans Business Outreach Center or Women's Business Center to have that consultation with before you approach your lender and so you're prepared going into it. They also can assist you with applying to the EIDL loan, let's say if you were denied and you need some help gathering all the documents or getting everything ready to submit for reconsideration, they can help with that as well. All right, so I that is the end of our formal presentation. I am not seeing any more questions coming in, but we'll, I'll wait a few minutes if you have any additional questions about the SBA lending programs or some of the, the newer programs such as the COVID-19 economic injury disaster loan, please feel free to put that um, in the chat. Oh, I see one, are there programs for businesses that are in the startup phase? Yeah, so we also have a micro lending program. Um, that was a good one for uh, startup businesses. Like the, the loans are typically smaller, so you may look into that. And again, our traditional lending programs are available to startups, but I understand it can be hard to meet some of the requirements as a newer business. So I would look into that. I would also say reaching out to this network on the screen, um, finding, getting tapped into the local communities around you. You may even find local resources as well. Um, are there any grants for businesses? So the only one the SBA has is the targeted idle advance that is available, but remember you must be in a low income community, you must have 300 employees or less, and you must show that 30% reduction in revenue during an eight week period from March, 2020 or later. So that, that is a program that is open um, as far as a, at a grant.
And let's see. Someone did ask about the SBA disaster customer service email. So I'm just going to put that in the chat. All right, um, are there grants and loans, are the only options for small business? Are other resources and other than the ones you mentioned? Um, that, yeah, that's all we have. I would say connect with a resource center or resource partner near you. And um, they may also be able to help you tap into other resources near you. Um, we received the $10,000 advance, but we we're declined for the loan. No one responds from customer service. Um, and no one, we've tried to contact someone in writing and online and no one responds. So, yeah, I'm sorry to hear about that. Um, most of the time, sometimes the denial letter can be vague. I will put our district email address in the chat. So, if you want to contact the Illinois District Office, we can look into your case and see most of the time we're able to identify why you were denied. We just need a, some information from you. So I'll just put that in the chat, um, everyone. Um, can the targeted advance money be used for payroll and equipment? So the targeted advance does not have to be repaid. So there's no, as far as reporting um, for, for how that should be used. Most, most of the time it's just to run your business. But um, as far as a specific use, targeted advance is essentially a grant. You do not have to repay that. Um, what is the amount for the, where is it? What is the amount for the targeted advance? So typically the, the maximum, there's two programs. There's a targeted advance and then there's a supplemental advance. So I'll go ahead and just navigate there. Here we go. So it's up to $10,000. Um, it is the maximum you can receive for the advance. And then if you do receive the advance, you could potentially receive up to $5,000 as a supplemental. Now, that one, there's further requirements. So again, you must be located in a low-income community. This time to get the supplemental would be you have to show a 50% economic loss in an eight-week period from March 2020 or on, and you must have 10 fewer employees. So the maximum total for the advance could be 15000 For the targeted, the first round, the maximum is 10000 and then again, if you meet the further requirements, you could receive up to 5,000 on top of that. Um, I don't see any questions coming in. I do see just the clarification someone put in. Um, which is just clarifying again, the 504 program is really meant to help fund buildings, heavy machinery, real estate. It cannot be used for working capital. That's the 7A loan. So if you're looking for more working capital, general business expenses, 7A. Now, if you're doing you know, heavy machinery or real estate, think 504. That's what that program is for. So, and then the nice thing too is once you get connected with the lender, they'll walk you through all of this, but it does help to have that background knowledge before you kind of go in. Hey, Dara, that was my fault. I was <laughs> sending that to a message privately and they alerted me to it. So I had to get it out to everyone. <clears throat> but I also wanted to alert everybody for you. A lot of times when you have your startup needs, you had referred to uh, www.sba.gov forward slash 
local assistance. And with that being said, you have uh, 37 small business development centers throughout the state of Illinois with 41 locations. You can get help from them. We have five uh, chapters of SCORE. You can get a hold of those folks. They're located throughout the state. Um, we only have two WBC centers, one in Aurora and one in Chicago, uh, both uh, anchored by the Women's Small Business Development Center in Chicago at 8 South Michigan, but nonetheless, they're available. If you need uh, help, these are the folks that will go ahead and actually hold your hand and take you through it to make sure that you do everything correctly that is necessary um, to be successful. Because we all want to be able to fund your dreams as a startup and help you grow if you're an existing business. And keep in mind, too, unlike the EIDL going up to that uh, $2 million threshold, you know, most of our SBA loan programs have a $5 million threshold. And some that have public policy goals in mind, which you would find in the uh, 504 loan program can go up to 7 million. So please don't be afraid to uh, look around our webpage and just let us amaze you with all the different loan programs that we do have available for you. In addition to other programs that are uh, COVID related. So that's what I yeah. wanted to say. Mark, that was good. I just, sorry, I missed this. Somebody did have a question. Maybe you know the answer since you have a background in lending. Do you know if any of these loans would have an impact on my ability to purchase qualify for a home mortgage in the future? Um, no, not if the loan, if the loan is for the business, it should not have an effect on a home loan for you. Um, if they look at universal income, and let's say, for example, uh, most loans come with a personal guarantee. If it is a secured personal guarantee and you secured it with an existing home, well, before you buy another home, you'd have to get a subordination agreement. And that's not that much. That's something that you would handle through your lender in the SBA, but it shouldn't really present a problem. So it shouldn't uh, stretch out your 2836 or 2843 gross income parameters, income expense parameters for home lending. <clears throat> Excuse me. Great, thank you. Um, I saw one other question about credit scores. So for the COVID IDLE program, um, the for a business, if you're looking for a loan of 500,000 or less, the minimum credit score is 570. And again, you must show that repayment ability. Now, if you're looking for a loan above 500,000, you'll need a credit score of at least 625. Um, and then there's some additional underwriting processes for the loans that go up above 500,000. So that is something someone had asked. Derek, could I add to that whenever you see a loan, <clears throat> Excuse me. Whenever you see a loan application or a uh, you have to apply for a loan, you have to keep the five C's of credit in mind. You know, economic conditions, capacity to repay, collateral, uh, character. Um, did I miss one? Um, uh, collateral, uh, capacity, credit, character, economic conditions. I think I got them all. Oh, and capital injection. Capital injection, please. If you're going to go into business, uh, if it's a relatively big loan, every banker is going to ask you to put your money where your mouth is. So make sure you got some money in your pocket to invest in your dream. Okay. There you go. Yeah, no, good points. Good points, definitely. So, yeah, just keep those credit scores in mind, especially if you're going for a loan um, above above uh, 500,000, that credit score will need to be a little bit higher. Um, so that's for the COVID idle program. And most of our lending programs, um, as Mark said, they're gonna be evaluated on other needs as well. So not solely the credit credit score, credit history, but it definitely is a fact. Dara, we might wanna add to that 570, 625 threshold 
is specifically for the COVID related program. Yep. Okay? yep. When you get into when you get into some of the other seven A features, we have banks who will go ahead and underwrite the loan and either ask for a guarantee or they have the capability of applying our guarantee to the loan. But that's when the five C's of credit are going to come to play. And I can guarantee you that most of the banks are going to be looking for a little bit higher than a 625 credit score outside of the COVID-19 relief loan programs. Okay. Yeah. Great point. Um, one question just that I see, do I have to be a female to go to a woman's business development center? So that's definitely their specialty as far as helping women entrepreneurs, or maybe even helping folks get that woman on certification, but I believe their training is open to all small businesses and some of their um, consulting and advising could apply to um, all, all small businesses. In a nutshell, you can, you don't have to be uh, a woman to go and get their assistance at the WBDC or yeah, the but, business center. It's open for everybody. Yeah, exactly. It's just that they, they're, they're, they're a resource for women entrepreneurs or, or folks trying to navigate some of the certification programs or just some of the unique barriers that women entrepreneurs go through the space for that. But if that's the closest one near you or most convenient for you, you can also give them a call. I believe most of them are still doing um, virtual too. Um, this might be a good question for you, Mark. Um, if not having a good credit, if I don't have a good credit score, what are other ways to make my profile stronger <laughs> to get a 7A loan? Would a co-signer work, et cetera? You know, if you have a partner or anybody that's invested in the business of 20% or more, uh, we are obligated to take them as a co-signer or what have you. But you have to remember you are a, you're applying for a commercial loan and depending on your legal structure and your organization, uh, that's going to determine how we, how we actually book that loan. So, for example, if you don't, if you're a sole proprietor and you're just starting out and you don't have a prolific credit score and you know you need a little help or what have you, some of the things that you need to do is rebuild your credit score. I don't think you have to go to a credit repair agency. All you need to do is go to the Federal Trade Commission and look up credit score. They'll tell you exactly what it is that you need to do to straighten things out with the credit bureau so you don't have to pay a whole bunch of money to somebody else to do that for you unless you just don't have the time to do it. Number one, number two, an easier way of doing things and what I've advised people through my 40 year, <clears throat> excuse me, career of lending is that if you got to reestablish credit, you want to put it in your ballpark. You want to make it easy on you. So you may want to maybe buy some furniture, um, maybe take $3,000 out on a loan for some furniture that you have to repay back in you know two to three years that's within your parameters where you won't be late you don't want to be late <laughs> okay but you want to make sure you can make that kind of payment in in addition to that you want to make sure that uh they're reporting to the three repositories transunion experian and um i think it's credit facts so that way then you can um uh, Get your scores reestablished because a lot of times, and especially for the the person that asked about the home loan mortgage, they're going to pull a tri merge. Nobody's just pulling one bureau; they're pulling all three bureaus now. And if you have some derogatory credit on there, then you need to have a LOX or what we call a letter of explanation as to why this situation happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great, right. and then. As a follow up, can I take out a loan with collateral such as savings or a loan? You can do that. Now, that is something that bankers do. I've done that before. Like, say, for example, you're, you're a young person and you have a $2,000 uh, CD. I may give you a CD loan and we can establish credit that way. Once you pay it off, then I may give it to you unsecured and not secure it with you know, a $2,000 CD or other monies. But that's an excellent way to get your credit started. 
especially in the name of your business, okay? I'll let it, that's a form of hypothecation. I know it's All a right. big word, but you know, what you're saying is that I'm gonna lend this asset over here so I can get this loan in, in my business name or what have you. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, that was great. That was great. Um, just seeing if there are any other questions. No, somebody just asked for the lender match. So I did put the link to lender match. So again, if you're looking for 7A loan or 504, you can find lenders through lender match. But um, again, oh, never a bad idea to connect with the resource partner first, just because um, as I'm sure Mark can tell you, he has many years experience with lending and banking. You wanna make a good first impression. You wanna be prepared. So um, talking with a resource partner in preparation to going through lender match or approaching a lender is never a bad idea. If you've already done that or you feel prepared, then I'd say go ahead, lender match is gonna connect you with lenders. I believe the turnaround time after you put your info in, it's 48 to 72 hours, you'll start to get um, contacted by potential lenders. And for those existing businesses, Dara, uh, if you don't have a relationship with your banker at your bank, where you're doing a lot of business, shame on you. You need to create a relationship with them. So let them know who you are, what you do, what your business is, because one day you might need them to grow your business. And so it's nice to be on a first name, at least a first name basis, at least the person has an idea of who you are. You're not just coming in cold, okay? So even once you establish yourself and you, you get someone to pick you up off a lender match, you want to establish that relationship with them because you're you're going to need your folks down the road. You're going to have a inner circle of bankers, lawyers, uh, uh, um, um, accountants, insurance people. Keep your inner circle together because one way or another, you're going to need that circle somewhere down the road if you're really going to grow your business and uh, be a real game changer. Very true. Very true. I'm not seeing any more questions. So again, um, here is the Illinois district contact, illinois.do at sba.gov. So there were some folks who said they applied to IDLE, having a hard time getting through to customer service. Send us an email. We'll see what we can do. If we can find out anything related to your COVID IDLE application, or if you have further questions about 7A or 504, any of that thing of that nature, we are here as a resource. So that's our, our email. Um, we are virtual. I put our, our addresses. We have a Chicago office and a Springfield office, but we are virtual. So don't don't make a trip downtown. If you don't have to, just <laughs> give us a call or email us is preferable. Yeah. We are virtual. We haven't been in the office for a little bit, but uh, I think that uh, we will service you with the same uh care that we would as we would so in person so yeah well i yeah i don't see any more amazing, questions you've done an Sorry. amazing job as usual yeah thanks mark we really appreciated your input and your expertise and a lot of these these questions so thanks for joining us this was great oh not a problem you know how i love my small business people <laughs> Thank you guys so much for today's presentation. I hope that all of our attendees got the much needed information. Again, this webinar will be posted on the Chicago BACP YouTube page. If not by tomorrow, you can try Monday. To learn more about our upcoming webinars, please visit chicago.gov forward slash business education. If you just happen to be in a downtown area tomorrow, please join us for the final food truck festival of the season. We will be out there from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Come out and support small businesses here in the city. Um, thank you guys again, Mark and Daria. Bye. Thank you all. Bye -bye. Thank you all. Thank you so much thank for you having so us. Thank you so much for having us. Bye-bye.